more than just a phrase or it's a fact my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us he can bring us peace courage hope solve conflict my God is able to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we can ask or imagine it's a fact to God be the glory it's fact it's a reality that so many of us have experienced His intervention, doing that which was totally beyond us, our imagination. Well, I'm going to preach that sermon instead of this one. I probably ought to get my notes out. I want to talk about Jacob today. I want to talk about Jacob and he's in Genesis it's from about twenty five to thirty five chapters. Jacob, the prince of Israel. Well, he became the prince of Israel. He became uh, Israel. And that means prince of God, actually. But he had a hard struggle getting there. I want to talk about that struggle. It really begins with his father Isaac, who, who hurt for his wife, Rebecca, because she was childless, and so he prayed on her behalf, and and and, and he prayed, and 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 God answered his prayer, and and Rebecca became pregnant. Um, she had was going to have twins, and these two guys started fighting before they were born. In fact, is they're fighting so hard within her, she is so uncomfortable. That she cries out to God, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. And the older will serve the younger. Esau, the older, will serve Jacob, the younger. (coughs) I mean, you talk about having a maid. Talk about being born with the silver spoon. Here's the creator, God of the universe, before you're already born, lining you up and telling you, buddy, you're the one. You're going to be the one in charge. By the way, before we were all born, God had a plan for us. We're all Jacob's. I have a plan for you, a plan for good, not evil, to give you a future and a hope, it says in the Old Testament. And Paul tells us in the New Testament that before we were born, God had a work for us to do. Years passed, and now they're young men, and, 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 and once uh, Jacob was, was cooking some stew, and Esau came in and, from the open country, famished, and he said to Jacob, Quick, let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. And Jacob replied, First, sell me your birthright. Say what? For a little stew? You want my birthright? Eh, okay. Look, I'm about to die, Esau said. What good is my birthright to me? But Jacob, being a lawyer. No, that's not in there. Swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Well, there you go. Years passed, Isaac's old. His health is failing. His eyesight is bad. 
And Isaac calls in Esau, his favorite. And he tells him, I want you to go out and hunt. And I want you to, to, to get this, 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 and this game. I want you to come back. I want you to cook it. And I want to eat it. And then when we're through eating, why, I'll give you your blessing. Uh, Rebecca hears this. Wait a minute. That blessing's for my favorite, Jacob. So she cocks, concocts this plan to steal the blessing. Obviously, she's not trusting God to fulfill His Word that she, He gave her when she was pregnant. So, so, so she concocts this plan. She tells Jacob. And Jacob is still following the way. And he says to her, I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. See, there's still some ethics there. And his mother said to him, my son, let the curse fall on me. You do what I tell you to do. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Remember before the birth. We saw in Jacob it was prophesied that the older would serve the younger, and that is a total reversal of the customs of the time. Something very unusual, unnatural would have to happen for that to take place. And Rebecca is intervening now on behalf of her son because it's pretty obvious that she doesn't think God either is going to do it or God can't do it or whatever, but she doesn't have any confidence in God's promise to her. And yet she knows he promises she's just going to stick her nose in it. And with her aggressive will, she plans to steal the blessing. And in large measure, because this woman didn't trust God, but trusted herself to achieve the will of God, she stunted the spiritual growth of her son. And the truth is, the apple didn't fall far from the tree, and he became like his mother, a conniving schemer. By the way, that's what the name means. He got the blessing. <clears throat> but in truth, he stole the blessing. He acted on the principle, the end justifies the means. So often we have this idea, well, it's a good means, and, 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 and it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's a good outcome, and, and we'll, just, you know, we'll just do it this way because our motives are right, and we'll just do it this way, and then we'll get this result, and that's a good result. That's not the way God works. The ends does not justify the means. God is as, is, is as concerned about how you do things as He is about the result. And if you go about scheming and conniving and manipulating and all of this other stuff, trying to... And that's what this story is about. The fact is, you end up further from what you wanted than when you started. For every move of cleverness that Jacob had, God countered the move. It took years for Jacob to figure this out, and neither his cleverness nor his shrewdness nor his manipulations or, the, or managing his affairs through expediency and opportunity Whatever it was, it didn't work. And the spiritual progress in our lives will always be stunted and it will always be hampered if we are trying to manipulate and self-manage our lives. It is God's prerogative to plan and to carry out that plan as we are obedient to the plan and its actions. It's not this false commitment 
that says, oh, I think we should do this for God, and you go begin to do it. It's not this commitment that says, oh, God, bless what I've concocted in my head. It's this commitment that says, okay, God, this is your plan. Now, how are we going to work it? What do you want me to do? What, what is it that I'm to participate in? Esau held a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing his father had given him and said to himself, The day of mourning for my father is near, then I will kill my brother Jacob. Rebecca finds out Esau's plan. She calls in her favorite son and she says, Man, he's going to kill you. Get out of here. You go to my father Laban in Haran and you just stay there a little while. Your brother Esau is planning to avenge himself by killing you. Flee at once to my brother Laban and Haran. Stay with them for a while until your brother's fury subsides. It'll only be a little while and then he'll just forget about it. It'll be okay. He stole your birthright, dude. Then going to be a little while. Once again... Rebecca uses deception and deceit and she involving her son Jacob and she gets him out of the country. Now a fugitive from his brother's wrath, here is Jacob. He's fleeing his homeland. He's abandoning everything that he has gained. His mother's precious manipulations that he participated in have now all come back upon them. And now Jacob, instead of having everything... Now he has nothing. He's got the sky over his head. He's got a rock for a pillow. He's got the clothes on his back and the staff in his hand. And that's all he's got. Esau's got everything else. And legally it all belongs to Jacob. That's the reward of the schemer. the manipulator. Nothing. Nothing. And as he goes off into the desert, all that scheming mocks him as he travels destitute and alone. And look at Rebecca. Holy cow. Do you think she had any idea of the consequences of her deceit? If she did, hopefully she'd behave differently. I mean, little did she realize that she would lose her dear son forever. Years later in her loneliness, there is no Jacob. When she dies, there is no Jacob. Her reward for her deceitfulness is not him being exalted. Her reward for her deceitfulness, she dies alone and he's off somewhere else. But oh yeah, she has to live with all these years, this haunting thought, that, <laughs> that all these years of hardship that lay ahead of, for her son. She has to re remember that, that she faced the fact that, that she has lost everything she could have gained. She has to live with the fact that she influenced her son. Not in the ways of obedience, but in the ways of deceit and manipulation. Not very rewarding. On his way to Haran, one night he has a dream. And God spoke to him, and God gave him wonderful, marvelous, precious promises. He showed Jacob the future, and Jacob understood and realized it was God who spoke to me. And he took the rock that he had used for a pillow, and he set it out, and he poured oil over it, and, and anointed it, and he called the place Bethel. Bethel. 